Got a new Mesh-tastic device, a couple of them. The ThinkNode M1 and M2. These come from Elecro. Elecro was gracious and kind enough to send those to me, and we're going to talk about those and how they compare to a few other nodes today. So this is the... This one's kind of cool because you can adjust the screen brightness with the power knob. Turn this power knob on and off here, and if you turn it up there, the screen gets brighter and brighter and brighter to there, and you turn it all the way to the left like that, and it goes back to the screen that you can see easily in the sun, and then you turn it one click to the left, it'll power off the device. Kind of a neat thing there. This one here is smaller and a little bit less capable, in my opinion. I'm going to send some messages back and forth today between my Sensicap T1000 to these two and just kind of show you what Meshtastic looks like. You've probably seen that before. But in case you've never heard of these Think nodes, these are fairly new. The Think One M2 is the smaller guy right here. This one does not have removable antenna. This is all a fixed antenna, smaller. It's got a black screen with blue text on it, which I kind of prefer. I like it a little bit better. According to the website here, it's got a ESP32 S3 chip in it. Powered by an ESP32 S3 chip. You can see right here it sells for $43.90 on the Elecro website. I'm going to share a link to this in the description below. Once again, these were sent to me by Elecro, so I appreciate them reaching out. They've got a lot of different things on this website over here. Meshtastic, Laura, Wan, a bunch of other stuff besides just Meshtastic. So check out the website in the description below. The cool thing about this M1, now the M1 is larger, more powerful, and has a few more functions. I would have called the M2 the larger one. So the M1 is the larger and better one. The M2 is the smaller and less capable one. Nothing wrong with the M2. It's just, it's got the ESP32 chip on it. But the M1 here has the NRF chip on it right here. This new NRF52840. But the cool thing about this chip is I have a couple of other nodes from other brands with this chip. And the battery on this chip lasts two to three times as long as any of the ESP32 chips here. So there's nothing wrong with the ESP32 chip. It's been around for a long time. Most of your Helltechs have an ESP32 chip in them. A lot of your older Spec 5s and Seed Studios stuff have ESP32 chips in it. A lot of ESP32 chips out there, but this NRF chip is a little bit newer, and the battery life on it is much, much longer than what the old ESP32 chip is. So I've, you know... Just something that's different between these two nodes. This one also has a GPS function. Now, if we go over here, go back over here to the overhead, you can see right here, the scroll buttons up and down right here on the unit are for scrolling through the uh, what you see on the screen. Turn the screen up right there. And then once you see the screen, you can see the nodes that have been meshed on the screen there. You can page through them here and send messages that way. Or you can read messages. You'd have to send them messages with the app still. This is a toggle switch off and on right here where you can turn the GPS off and on. So you have the option for GPS, and you don't have to use it all the time, which I thought was a cool feature. I thought that was a cool feature that you didn't have to use the GPS 100% of the time. If you ever wanted to go in and turn the GPS off for whatever reason, not use it at all, you could totally do that. So let's connect to Meshtastic and see what it looks like on the screen. There have been a lot of updates lately to the latest version of the Android app. I don't have an iPhone, so I can't tell you about the iPhone app. But traditionally speaking, the iPhone app has had more than the Android app as far as Meshtastic goes. I think the developers just work on it more, or maybe it's been around longer. And there's more features on the iPhone app than the Android app traditionally. But this Android app certainly has a lot of features on it today. And they've definitely been working on it and developing it more. So I've been very pleased to see that lately. All right, here on the screen for the Android app for Meshtastic... We see, okay, that's the long fast room. So I'm going to go back over here to nodes. Okay, and my KC5 HWB pocket, the one at the top here, this is the node that I still carry with me on a daily basis. This is my T1000 sensor cap node. Testing a couple other nodes that uh, might end up replacing that one because that is a fantastic node for receiving, but transmitting is a little bit lack because of the small antenna in it, but it does have an excellent receiver. But you see those, uh, the think. Node M2 and M1 there at the top of the screen, and then this is some other stuff I've seen over the last few days since I've reset my node database, which I guess I need to do again right there. So I'm going to put, let's see, I'm going to go to conversations, and we're just going to do long fast here, and I'm going to say, okay, test, 
from pocket right there I'm gonna send that and now we've got these beeping at us right here both of these are beeping at us right here so I don't know if you can hear that in the microphone or not they've got the uh, long notification string on them which you can go into the app and change that I can connect the app here to either one of these nodes and I can change the notification to only notify for one second I think default is like 30 seconds I have no idea why they default to a 30 second notification per message if you're in a high density environment with meshtastic and you're <laughs> you're uh, having um, a lot of people send messages at one time then uh, that, that gets really annoying really fast but you can see test from pocket on the screen of both of those right there and okay stopped that one and these don't have keyboards on them and unfortunately I can't reply from the node I can see the message and then I can open up my connected device my iPhone or, or Android whichever it might be and then we can go in there and reply to it that way but at least you can read the message on the screen so if a conversation is going on and someone's talking and it's like hey they're talking to somebody else they're not really talking to me I, I heard the notification sound I look up I was like oh they're there's two other guys talking. I'm not part of this conversation. I don't have to grab my phone and get it out and look around for, um, you know, to try to reply to it. So, but one of the things I really like about this one, again, it's the last thing I'll say about this one here, is that this antenna is, I said earlier on, this antenna was, the, this is the Pocket M2. Again, I, I think they're named backwards. I think the M2 should be the bigger one because it's the higher number. I mean, that's just my opinion. I just think that's a little bit strange. But this is the M1. And this is the M2 right here. So the M2 has got this fixed antenna right here. It does not move at all. Power button right there. Paging through the menus button right there. I can go and hit that. And it toggles through the screen right there. Just like that. It shows me my battery. KC5 HWBF250. That's the note in my truck. It saw that a few days ago. It says unknown age. Pocket was two minutes ago. It's less than that actually. M1, which is uh, this guy. This is the M1. <laughs> See, I'm getting confused. I want to call this one the M2, but I, but it's not. It's the M1. The M1 is the is the bigger and, and more robust one with more features. And then long fast is the last message, heard, the room in the last message heard. And then the last screen shows the uh, battery voltage, the time, and a few other pieces of information there. That's the M2 device right there. It says M2 on the bottom there. This is the M1, and it has a removable antenna. So this is great because you can attach an external antenna to it and get a little bit better. You can put a longer antenna, more a high-gain rubber duck antenna on it. You can attach an external antenna to it and put a mag mount on your vehicle. Today's video is not officially sponsored. However, it's unofficially sponsored by my Amazon store, which I have a list of Meshtastic devices on. I put the M1 node on this list from Amazon, and even though it has a 20% off coupon right now, it's still about $30 higher than the Elecro website. Okay, it's $79 here on Amazon, and it's about $53 here. Well, about yeah, about $25. $53 here on their website. So go to their website. I'll, I'll share that in the description below. But on my Amazon store, I do have a lot of things, including this antenna right here. This is the external antenna that I have on my truck right now. It's a mag mount antenna for 915 megahertz uh, LoRa. Works perfectly, has an SMA connector on it, so check that out. That will be in the description below as well. But having an, a removable antenna like this gives you a little bit more versatile options for nodes. You could hang this in the truck and run an antenna outside, or you could put a larger antenna on it and set it on, you know, like an outside table at a campsite or even in your backyard, something like that and get a little bit better range out of it simply because it does have a removable antenna. So does anyone use these? As, have you guys ever seen these nodes before? Does it, is anyone using the M1 or M2 from Elecro Think Node? I'd like to know what you think about these in the description below. What kind of applications do you use them for? And this little one with the non-removable antenna, this M2, I can't imagine myself using that. I, I just, this would be a good one to leave at home or something like that. You wouldn't want to put that in a bag or a pocket because I'm afraid this would get broken. Okay, so you could use this as like a secondary node because all these nodes are meshing together, right? So you could use this as a secondary node. You got a node on the outside of your house. Cool. You could put this one in your kitchen or in your office or in your bedroom 
and have it just meshed out there and kind of repeating signals and just turn it on client mute mode and have it uh, as part of the network. And then this guy right here, you could easily run in a vehicle or with a larger antenna at a campsite or outside in your backyard or somewhere remotely and have the range extended on it because not only does it have a longer battery life, but it has an SMA connector with a removable antenna that you can add something longer to. So a couple different versatility options there from Elecro Think Nodes. I'd like to know what you guys think in the description below. Check out the links to everything we talked about today, and uh, we'll catch you next time.